Our guest today is the chairman of the Illinois State Board of Investment. The Illinois State Board of Investment manages the pension assets of three pension funds. The Judges Retirement System, the General Assembly Retirement System, and the State Employee Retirement System. The current amount under investment is over $11 billion. He is a partner in the prestigious law firm of Power, Rogers, and Smith. He earned his undergraduate degree and his law degree from the University of Illinois in Champaign. He and his wife, Yvonne, live in Chicago and are the proud parents of four beautiful children. Ladies and gentlemen, Devin Bruce. Devin? All right, Devin, have some fun up here. Good, af good afternoon and thank you, uh, Jay. Um, I'm deeply humbled to be here and I wanna thank everyone at the City Club for the opportunity to uh, share some remarks and hopefully some insight into the Illinois State Board of Investment. Um, before I begin, <clears throat> Jay has uh, identified quite a few uh, friends and, and uh, dignitaries that I was gonna recognize. I do wanna say one thing in particular. Um, for those of us that come to the City Club on a regular basis, <clears throat> this is really a great forum. It's a great kind of core democratic idea where we have questions from the audience of the speakers. You've got a wide breadth of people that come here from United States senators, ambassadors, mayors, and captains of industry. And it's really something very unique. We don't see this regularly. And Jay is very good about recognizing those of us in the audience and recognizing what they do. Uh, Jay, I want to thank you for everything that you do. We would not be here if it wasn't for you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'd also like to uh, recognize uh, Chairman and Professor Paul Green. Thank you for everything that you do, Paul. It, 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 similar to what I was remarking about, Jay, we wouldn't have this uh, great forum if you weren't here today. <clears throat> <clears throat> For brevity's sake, uh, in addition to the people that Jay already recognized here today, I do see uh, some very good friends. I see uh, Chris Meister, the executive director of the Illinois Finance Authorities, right here. <clears throat> I see former University of Illinois uh, Board of Trustee member and a colleague of mine, the U of I, Ken Schmitz, in the back. Thanks, Ken, for coming. I appreciate it. I see several of my former colleagues from the McPeer Board. I see Steve Hernandez is here. Thank you very much for coming, Steve. And I see uh, Chairman uh, Peter O'Brien, who's now the Chairman of the uh, Capital Development Board. Um, I would like to take a moment and uh, recognize uh, someone that Yvonne and I have gotten to know, she and her husband, well over the last few years. Um, it is awe-inspiring what their family does as a community service to the Chicagoland community and to the um, world as a whole. We have here Stephanie Comer with us today and her husband, Rob Craigie. And for those of you who don't know, Stephanie is the president of the Comer Foundation, Family Foundation, and they give literally tens of millions of dollars for education, health initiatives, and environmental concerns, not, not the least of which is underwriting the University of Chicago Children's Hospital, the Comer Family Foundation did that. Stephanie, thank you very much for coming. And, and if I can say this, Jay, um, I think you'd have a great speaker in Stephanie in the future, and she would be a great city club speaker and to talk about all the great things the Family Foundation does. Thank you for coming, Stephanie and Ron. <clears throat> Lastly, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Joe Power, he's the man that gave me my uh, first law job outside of the public sector. I clerked for the Supreme Court and uh, he taught me everything I know about practicing law and he allows me and the firm to uh, give public service in this capacity and others. Thank you very much, Joe. I really appreciate it. Um, my Uncle Terry, who was former United States Congressman for many years and, and my aunt have come all the way up from Southern Illinois. Hopefully I've got something insightful to say and thank you very much again for coming. Terry Bruce former state senator, United States congressman for many years. And last and not least, uh, thank you, Yvonne, for being here today. She's the only reason I'm able to do all these things. So thank you very much, Yvonne. Um, so before we open the topic of the Illinois State Board of Investment and the role that it plays in the Illinois pension scheme, I think it's important and incumbent uh, to first address the woefully underfunded state pension problem that is surrounding this entire country. 
The current numbers suggest somewhere in the neighborhood of $700 billion to $2 trillion that the state pension, public pension funds are underfunded from Rhode Island to California. Just take a moment and think about that. $700 billion to $2 trillion. It is a crisis, uh, a crisis of epic proportions. And um, I think we as policymakers in this debate about whether we should do this with respect to underfunding or pension reform or all of these measures that are being taken, uh, I for one think we as policymakers need to pause, stop, take a step back, and realize really what it is that we're talking about when we talk about state public pension funds. What are we talking about really at the end of the day? What we're talking about are public servants, public servants, the vast majority of which have had very moderate incomes their entire lives. They've worked 20, 30, 40 years in public service and out of each and every paycheck, every paycheck without fail, every two weeks, uh, money has been withdrawn from her, their paycheck, that modest paycheck, to go towards whatever their respective pension system is and whatever the state is. That's what they've paid into the deal. That's what they've paid into the bargain. And they're expecting that nest egg and that retirement, that pension, to be there when they finish and conclude. So if you take, for example, an IDOT worker, Illinois Department of Transportation worker, who's worked, a uh, single mom who's worked all her life out here uh, carrying the sign, the stop yield sign that we see on the side of the road, and they go out there and she does that for 30 years, she's taking money out of her pocket to put into this pension system, and this is her nest egg. That's all she's got. She's planning on that to be there. And I suggest to you now, um, her reading in the Sun Times, the Tribune, and the people that are similarly situated in Boston and New York and Washington and California, they're waking up in the, in the day and they're reading these newspapers and they're finding out that that money may not be there for them. That nest egg may not be there. And I think that's a very sobering thought and the context in which we as policymakers for pension funds and state lawmakers and governors across this country, we need to keep that in the back of our mind. Our decisions affect everyday people's lives and in a very significant fashion. So in that backdrop, I'd like to make some remarks today about the Illinois State Board of Investment. Um, the Illinois State Board of Investment, um, I'll try not to use uh, you know, too much vernacular. It's referred in, in here in Illinois as ISPE, Illinois State Board of Investment. It's simply a board set up by the state. It's a state-created entity. There's nine members, five of which are appointed by the governor, four of which are statutory appointed individuals that represent the three pension funds systems that Jay recognized. You've got the judicial pension system, the legislative pension system, and the state employees retirement system. So out of, in Illinois, the way our scheme is set up, our, our pension system, we've got three pension systems that are under ISPE, and then we have two others, the state teachers, ITRS, and SURS, S-U-R-S, that's the state employees retirement system. ISPE is responsible for managing the money of those three pension systems. It's approximately, to date, about $11.4 billion. In addition to that, we have responsibility for managing the funds of about $3.6 billion in defined contributions. Um, how do we do that? Well, first, of those nine members on the board, we have people from all walks of life. And I think that's a, that is a positive thing. That is, that is positive in the sense that with any board, you want people from all walks of life that are bringing different perspectives to the board. Um, I'm sure the governor did not appoint me for my 30 years as an investment banker. He didn't appoint me for that reason. I, I would like to think he appointed me for the skills that I've learned as a trial lawyer and for those skills that I bring from my life experiences. We have a, on the board together with me, we have a Sarah Lee Corporation, former executive. We have a, an executive from the YMCA retired. We have a, a prominent attorney from a labor firm. So we have people from different walks of life that bring those experiences to that nine member board and based upon the advice of external counsel and internal counsel, they make those decisions. And I think the most important thing that us as a board exercises is good judgment at the end of the day about what are the right managers to retain, when should we keep them, when should we get rid of them, and that's what ISBE does. Um, keeping in mind that the decisions that we make affect um, everyday um, lives of those people that are in the pension systems. So. I think in the backdrop of the ISPE, Illinois State Board Investment, it's important to understand in the framework of Illinois statutes what, we, what, what responsibilities ISPE has and what responsibilities lie with other entities. With respect to um, other entities, for example, just to be clear, the Illinois legislature and the governor um, 
through state statute, they set things like the retirement age. They set, you know, how much the amount of the contribution for each uh, person is going to be. They set up the formula by which those uh, individuals' pensions are extracted. Those types of things are all determined by state statute and then through the three pension systems that I've talked about vis-a-vis -vis ISPE. Um, ISPE does not have a role in any of that. And I, and I say that because in a lot of the discussions about the underfunding, it's important to recognize what we can affect and what we can at ISPE. Those are, that's something separate and distinct from ISPE. Um, so what do we do? What is it that we do? Our primary role and sole role is to manage the investments of this $11.4 billion, as well as the 3.6 in defined contributions, in the, at, in, in the most effective way that we can with the least amount of risk to our participants in the taxpayer's money, the least amount of risk at the least amount of expense. That's our goal. We want to maximize the returns with respect to the goal that's set forth uh, in the portfolio, and I'll get to that in a moment. There's a goal that's set, and so we want to maximize our returns at the lowest risk and the lowest expense. That's our key goal. And how do we do that? We do that by hiring outside money managers. Now, money managers are simply companies that manage our money uh, in pension money on the outside sector, and we hire them in various different asset classes. So they, so you've got large cap growth or mid cap value. And so for each of these asset classes, you have a separate um, set of money managers that we choose and retain to manage the money in that asset class. And our role not only is to choose those ass uh, money managers, but to make sure that they're doing their job and that they do it prudently and effectively. And I think lastly, most importantly, we need to make sure at the Illinois State Board of Investment, it is crucial that we make sure that the process by which we select these outside money managers is open. It's open to everyone. It's competitive. We want to hire the best managers, and it's transparent. I think that the individuals that are working day in and day out and taking money out of their paychecks and all of you in the, in the room that are paying Illinois state taxes, you deserve to know how it is that we're investing that money and we strive to do that. Now, in the broad concept, how is it that we invest this money? I think it's important first to understand what an actuarial rate of return is. Um, all that means in lay terms is this is the expected amount through a computation about the amount of money that is expected over an annualized rate of return over a long period of time, what um, someone or some entity thinks that we're going to make, how much money, what percent of interest we're going to earn over time on this pot of money. Now, this is an important point, this actuarial rate of return. It's an important point uh, for the way that the uh, framework is set up here in, in Illinois, but it's also an important point to understand before we get into a discussion about how and to what extent the underfunding exists. Remember I said 700 billion to 2 trillion? Well, you say, well, Devin, that's a big, wide-ranging number. Well, it all depends on where you peg that actuarial rate of return. Because depending on where you peg the actuarial rate of return, that determines how much money you have in your pension system to last to pay all the enrollees. For example, if you had a pot of money and you had 100 bucks over here, and then you got, a, to use an extreme example, a 50% annual actuarial rate of return, then you'd say, well, we only need this much money to pay off all of our uh, enrollees in the system. But if you had a 2% actuarial rate of return, using extreme example, you'd need a lot more money. So it's important to understand when we're talking about underfunding, what is the actual rate, actuarial rate of return? Now, at ISPE, I want to be clear, Illinois State Board of Investment, due to the statutory framework that's set up in Springfield, we do not set the actuarial rate of return. We do not set that. That is set by the three pension systems. Remember, the judicial pension system, the state employee uh, uh, system, and the General Assembly of the Legislative. They tell us what the actuarial rate of return is, and then we base our portfolio on that goal. That's what we're mandated to do by statute. Now, uh, I am, with that understanding, I'm happy to say, uh, since I was on the board, and uh, Dan Hines, Comptroller Hines, was on the board at the same time uh, back in September of 2010. Um, we had a robust and full discussion about this, and uh, we asked that each of the statutory heads of their pension systems, the head of the pension system for the judges, the head of the pension system for the uh, legislators and the head of the pension system for the state employees each sit on our board. Remember those four statutory appointees? Three of those people are the chairmen of those three pension systems. So we suggested strongly at the uh, recommendation of our outside 
uh, consultant and internal consultant that they lower the actuarial rate of return. That was accomplished. They did that uh, at, at our urging, and it went from 8.5 percent across the board to seven and three quarters for state employees retirement system and seven percent for the judges and the judicial and the general assembly. I think that's a step in the right direction. It's the right thing to do. By lowering the rate of return, what we did was I suggest you we're being honest to the taxpayer and we're being honest to our beneficiaries by saying this is really the a, a realistic goal that we expect to meet. Um, we did that, and I, and I want to thank Dan Hines. He was very instrumental in doing that uh, with respect to the state employees' retirement system, and it's, uh, it's, it's the right thing to do. So how it is um, we select our money managers, it's, it's, again, it's a very open, transparent, and competitive process. We have a website. You can go to the website. You can see all of these, uh, the exact procedure by which we select these managers. We have an outside consultant, Marquette and Associates, um, they're led by Brian Rubel, and then we have an internal staff that's led by Bill Atwood. Bill is here today. We have 11 full-time employees at ISPE. That's it. Just pause and think about that. There's 11.4 billion plus 3.6 billion. We have 11 full-time staff members internally that work for us. Bill Atwood and I did not know each other at all before I joined this board 18 months ago. He and I have worked hand in glove uh, on a number of different issues. I, I have to say, honestly, we could not find a better person to hold that position. We're very lucky, and I thank you, Bill, for all that you do. You do an outstanding job. Thank you very much. So based upon the outside consultant, which owes us a fiduciary, and the internal staff, they ultimately winnowed down these lists. So we post the site, we need a mid-cap manager. So then they post this out on the internet and the website, and then we go from you know hundreds or whatever it may be, and it's winnowed down, and ultimately it's presented to the board, and they, and they say, and they stand behind whatever recommendation, they say, well, here's three or five managers. You can choose any of these, and whichever one of those will stand behind, and then the board ultimately selects those based upon their recommendation and expertise. That's how they're selected. Now, the flip side of that, and I think this is an important point to make, the flip side of that is that we as board members and the staff have a fiduciary duty to remember, maximize and get the best rate of return at the lowest risk and the lowest expense based upon the actuarial rate that we're told to get from the pension system. So that's our goal. I don't think we would be doing our goal, and I suggest to you we would, in fact, uh, be violating our goal if once those money managers are with us and they have our money, we do not continuously and vigilantly watch and make sure that they're investing our money uh, pursuant to industry standards. So the way we do that is there's benchmarks. So in each of these asset classes, there are nationally recognized benchmarks, and they say in mid-cap value, here's the thing, or whatever it may be, there's a benchmark, a, a, an industry standard, and that shows where they should be. And if they don't meet or beat these industry uh, benchmarks, then we put them, and they don't meet those goals on a regular basis, we put them on a watch list. And on the watch list, we, we bring them in, we talk to them and say, hey, what's going on? How are you going to change that? What's, what's your prognosis? Why are you below the industry benchmark? And if they continue to underperform, it, we terminate them. And that's what I would suggest to you we're required to do. So simply because uh, they've gotten the uh, Illinois State Board of Investment Pension Funds and those taxpayer dollars, just because they have that doesn't mean they're going to keep it forever. You cannot rest on your laurels. And it's just it's, it's common sense. If uh, somebody had my 401k or IRA and uh, I see that, you know, in whatever asset class, somebody else is getting 8% all the time, the industry average is 5% and they get me 1%, sooner or later I'm going to say, hey, what's the problem here? I, you know, why are you got me in that fund? So that's it's, it serves the same purpose here. So if they don't perform, they're out. And uh, that's something that the staff constantly keeps uh, vigilance on. Now, similarly, another role of the external and internal staff is to be cognizant, and ultimately the board, is to be cognizant of all of these different economic vehicles that are out there to invest money. This is a constantly changing world. There's a lot of spinning plates about different vehicles to invest money. And even though we may have a, you know, excellent performers on one asset class and they're doing a great job, if you examine that asset class and you find out there's better ways to maximize the return or to manage the return pursuant to the goal of the portfolio for the taxpayer dollars and ultimately for the single mom that works for IDOT, 
um, we're going to take that because, it, respectfully, our goal is not to look out for the managers. Our goal is to maximize the return at the least amount of risk. So, you know, um, you know, if you just read, and I'm just using this as an example. I was just in regard. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, recently, the Wall Street Journal's had a lot of articles about hedge funds. We've heard a lot about hedge funds. Hedge funds, uh, our experience, at least at the Illinois State Board of Investment, has been very positive. We've got positive, good returns on hedge funds. We're in fund of funds, okay? So hedge funds that actually manage uh, funds themselves. So there's one overarching hedge fund of fund, and then there's hedge funds below that. And there's a movement in this country to start looking at how we can adjust those fees and expenses. And a lot of other pension funds across this country are doing that to maybe a hybrid system or maybe direct funds, hedge funds. I'm not suggesting at all what ISPE is going to do. We're, that's just one of many things to look at. Um, the point that, that I'm making here is, is that we owe a duty to constantly be looking at any way we can cut those expenses down because we are talking about billions of dollars. I mean, it's a lot of money. So when we tar start talking about expenses on billions of dollars, it gets into the many millions of dollars. And we know the nature of the underfunding. So, um, so you say, Devin, well, you're talking about holding these managers' feet to the fire. How has this be done? How is the Illinois State Board of Investment? And I suggest to you that's a good question. Um, since 1970, when the Illinois State Board of Investment was set up, the annualized rate of return is 8.6% during the life of ISPE. So if you remember, I was talking about earlier on about um, actuarial rates of return. I think 8.6%, if you ask anybody in, in, in the industry, that's a pretty impressive figure, um, number one. Number two, if you look at more recently, if you want to look at more recently, fiscal year 2011, Illinois State Board of Investment achieved a, uh, what I thought was an astounding return of 22.2%. 22.2% we returned. Now that's fiscal year before we hit the third quarter of last year and the fourth quarter of where we all know there were some significant difficulties. And I think there's an important point to note here. Um, for those of you that are familiar in the, the institutional pension fund world, CalPERS, the California uh, Pension Employees Retirement System is like the, is the big behemoth, right? It has $220 billion, $220 billion. That's a lot of money. And they're the largest in the United States. And everybody kind of looks at CalPERS and says, what is CalPERS doing? How is CalPERS doing? They have hundreds of analysts. We have 11 employees at ISPE and six financial uh, uh, professionals within ISPE, six. They have hundreds. CalPERS in the same time period, fiscal year 2011, 20.9 percent. We beat them by about a point and a half percent, which I think is impressive. Um, I'm just using that as an example. We do a good job at the Illinois State Board of Investment, thanks to the internal external staff. You even look at down years. I mean, 2008 was a disaster. We all know. I mean, 2008 was one of the worst years we've had recently. Fiscal year 2008, we got a, a negative 20.1 percent. So our portfolio went down negative uh, 20.1. You say, well, Devin, that's terrible. Um, yeah, you have to keep in mind what was going on at the market. CalPERS, went down 23.4. So we went down 20.1, they went down 23.4. We beat them in the good year, we beat them in the uh, down years, we beat them in the up years. And th the fact of the matter, 8.6% is an impressive figure. So within that context of what has the performance been, I think it's important to note about our costs. Um, ISPE's fees uh, for the, uh, have consistently fallen in the other similarly situated pension funds in the bottom quartile of fees and expenses, bottom quartile. So now we've done excellent on performance at a very low fee and expense, and I think that's a good story to tell. Lastly, in respect to this, there is in the world of pension and institutional investments emerging and minority managers. Okay, that's a term of art that's used a lot. And that simply means smaller money managers, okay, these people that manage money in various asset classes on the outside, smaller money managers, less than $10 billion that are owned by minorities, women, or people of disability. And the Illinois uh, legislature has mandated that we at the Illinois State Board of Investment report to the legislature and the governor what it is that uh, how many uh, minority, uh, emerging minority managers we have, number one, and how much money we have with them at any given time. And I'm proud to say that not only did we get great performance at a very low cost, but we've also had a very good emerging and, manage, uh, and emerging manager, uh, strike that, we've had a number of excellent emerging minority managers at, and it's 26% uh, last year we reported for fiscal year 2011. So 26% of our uh, money managers fall within that category, and it's a good story to tell. Um, lastly, I want to talk about corporate governance. It's a broad term. It's used in the institutional and pension fund 
uh, systems a lot, it, it really means literally the way in which corporations um, address themselves with one another. You have stakeholders in a corporation, you have the shareholders, you have the management, and you have the board of directors. And corporate governance pertains in a broad concept to how that uh, relationship is structured. In my experience, it's kind of a broader concept corporate governance is in uh, institutional funds. It has to do also with shareholder activism and pursuing securities litigation, things of that nature. But corporate governance is all about shareholders and large institutions like us. Keep in mind, we have, through our investments, share a ton of shares in a ton of different companies. We have thousands and millions of shares in thousands of companies, okay? So we get a shareholder vote in each of those. And corporate governance is all about um, asking the corporations to do the right thing. Now, why do we do that? Because if they do the right thing in corporate governance, that's going to increase the bottom line for the shareholders, increase the bottom line for the company, but most importantly, it's going to increase the bottom line and help us maximize the return for our goal in the portfolio for that IDOT worker out there on the Kennedy Expressway. So that's why we engage in corporate governance. So what has ISPE done? ISPE, Illinois State Board of Investment, has done a number of different corporate governance measures. Number one, um, some years ago, um, we engaged an outside firm to do our proxy voting. And, and the reason for that is simple. We have 11 people. Um, it's uh, becoming now common in the industry. We can't cast those votes and research all of the issues in all of these different corporations, research what the issue is, find out what's right and wrong, and then cast those votes and keep up with the deadlines. It, it's, uh, it's not manageable. We have thousands of companies that we're invested in. So you hire an outside firm, you give them categories of best practices that they should follow when they're casting the votes, and we did it. So that's one step. Um, a second step that we've done is uh, the responsible, responsible contractor policy it has to do with our real estate holdings and make sure they're uh, practicing best practices. Um, we were involved in the Massey Energy uh, issue. Massey Energy was a large uh, power company, coal company on the East Coast. In April 2010, 29 miners died the worst mining disaster in the last 50 years in the United States. And unfortunately, what you find out when you peel back the onion is that the CEO and the board of directors were in lockstep, and there was all kinds of corporate practices that should have been done differently. Uh, ISPE and other pension funds got uh, shareholder activism going, and now that CEO that was in, a, uh, in charge uh, at the time is now removed, and the, uh, he stepped down, and uh, now the board is different in the structure there in that company. That's just one example of many, and Bill Atwood and I were at a meeting in Boston when we sat with other pension funds, uh, board of directors and chairman, and we're sitting in our room. There were pension funds from around the world. Australia was on the phone. England was on. English pension systems were on the phone. Australia pension system around the phone. Why? Because of News Corp and all of the uh, information you're hearing about the Murdoch family. So we all sat around the room and said, this is bad, and we want to vote them out, right? Vote these uh, board members out of the Murdoch family. Now, if we didn't win. We, we decided to cast a shareholder action. We didn't win. Murdoch's own over 50 percent of uh, News Corp. But the point that I'm making is we're trying and we're trying to exercise best practices so that at the end of the day, those people and you taxpayers and those people that are contributing to the pension systems, not only uh, are they uh, ultimately going to get uh, a benefit from that. So that's all I had to say today. I hope that's somewhat insightful. And uh, if there's anything that I can uh, leave you with as you leave the room here today is that I have not forgotten that uh, we have an awesome responsibility to invest and protect the nest egg of the IDOT worker on the Kennedy, all 125,000 former and current public servants that are in the system, as well as the taxpayers' money. Thank you. Going along with our international theme, Mayor Lawrence Morrissey from the beautiful Rockford, all the way from Winnebago County, uh, has this question. What will be the impact, if any, of proposed changes to the Illinois pension system or your organization's ability to meet its responsibilities. Uh, what would be the impact, if any, of proposed changes to the Illinois pension system? You kind of covered that, but he's the mayor. Give him a shot. Yeah. <laughs> a, a mayor in my law school classmate, I might add, and very good friend. Thank you, uh, Mayor Morrissey. Um, what, what are the, what's the impact of any proposed changes? Well, 
I think it's premature to tell. I don't know what the legislature and uh, the governor are ultimately going to decide to do. I mean, I do take comfort in one thing. I mean, clearly, when I stood in this, uh, was in this room and the governor was standing here about three weeks ago, and the comments, the ensuing comments in the press after his budget address recently, it is clear to me that all four legislative leaders and the governor clearly have this not only on the radar screen, but it's their number one issue along with Medicaid. And, and that I take comfort in, that it's going to be addressed. I don't know how they're going to ultimately resolve the issue and how it would impact uh, Illinois State Board of Investment. I mean, we can only just keep prudently investing that money. That, that's what we do. Uh, we have an anonymous question, which of course is never read. Uh, you could sandbag, but you got to say who you are. That's City Club rule number 42, I believe. All right, the last question is from Board of Governor Jeff Joyce X, and I think he answered it, but answer it again. How are your managers compensated? Do you determine their compensation? Well, uh, that is not an easily, who asked that question? That's not an easily answered question. Um, clearly they're paid, and uh, I would suggest they're paid well, but in terms of how their uh, fees and expenses are set, I believe an accurate statement would be that would all depend on what kind of asset class and what kind of economic vehicle it is, whether you're in hedge fund of funds, whether you're in private equity, whether you're in fixed income. I mean, it's going to vary widely depending on what vehicle you use. It, so, I mean, it, it all depends. Well, that's a good answer, a good question, and someday they'll meet. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for... Uh, oh, we got this, we got this.